When I define this being homeless is just like not being able to go home and not feeling safe there. I feel like a lot of kids feel like that, especially when you start wanting to be out and wanting to accept your homosexuality. You're afraid to go home, you know? I know that you struggled with homelessness, so when did that well, begin I mean, for you? I would go to my friend's house, I would stay out late, so I didn't have to like face conflict with my parents or just the guilt that I felt, you know? Yeah. They go from friend to friend to friend until they exhaust all their possibilities, then they're on the street or hopping from shelter to shelter. I would get food from HMI if I didn't have money, I would just ride the trains. Because riding the trains, it's kind of safe if you stay on the right line. Right, right. Trying to be out long enough so that I didn't have to be at home with my parents. By the time it was time to go home, everyone's like, wow, it's 2 o'clock in the morning, we're kind of tired. We're going to spend the night at your house, spend the night at this person's house. You don't do a lot of sleeping unless you honestly feel safe so right. you know what I mean? Like the story of a lot of gay homeless kids, Nicole had a contentious relationship with her parents to begin with. But coming out didn't help matters, especially having grown up in a strict religious family. You gotta touch the heart for good luck. I came here in the fifth grade and I stayed until the eighth. Why is it that you did choose this school so we could have this conversation? I guess I just got exposed to so much. When you're put with people from so many different places, it kind of challenges your stereotypes, and it did that for me. When you walk back in here, what does it feel like to you? It makes me think of how much I've grown up and how much I'm still going to grow, but like how much I have grown. I went to Catholic school as well. I went for 13 years. And my mom sent me pictures because she knew that I was meeting you and that you went to Catholic school. So we're, let's do a trade-off. Hold on, let's to make sure all the right pictures. Let's see who was more gawky looking. I, I always act goofy in my picture, so. So as not to look. Oh, it's okay. okay. You, won't, you won't believe. Okay, here you okay. go. Let's switch it off. You were adorable. You were part of D.A.R.E. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was Officer Spiller. He taught us about D.A.R.E. And I still have his t-shirt. Oh, my God, you're cute. <gasps> and that was an awkward stage. High school? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's kindergarten. That's kindergarten? <laughs> oh my god. I thought I was the shit. <laughs> <laughs> when was it that you first began to have these feelings that you were gay? In the seventh grade, a girl came to the school and like, I just was like floored by her. I thought she was like the queen of the Nile. And then in eighth grade, uh, another girl came and she started talking to me about like, Nicole, you have this weird vibe. Are you gay? And I was, I took it as like such a big offense. I was like, excuse me? I associated homosexuals with like bad people because that's all you learned. You know what I mean? It's either it's not talked about or when it is talked about, it's referred to as like, it's very sketchy. It's like when we started talking about abortion in the eighth grade oh, yeah, and yeah. gay marriage, it's just kind of like, don't do it. Like, you ask questions like, but doesn't God love everybody? He loves everyone, but you know, it's kind of like silence. And you're like... When did you approach your parents about this? I didn't actually, like, speak to my parents until late 11th grade. And I'm in the 12th grade now. A few months. Oh, oh my, a few months ago. And how did that go? <sighs> Crazy. My mom just was like, are you kidding me? She takes the Bible very, like, it is the book that God gave us. You know what we've learned. Like, just going through all of the chapters, all of the things that I've always been told, and that I used to believe, but, like, no longer want to, like, participate in. Well, I think if a young person is raised to believe in a higher power, and they're raised in a religious home, and they're taught those teachings, it's really difficult when they come out for them to reconcile who they are as a human being and not judge who they are as a human being. If you're friends with someone, you know, and that's how I always describe my relationship with God, like, you know, I felt like he cared about me and he was out there to like help me and protect me. And then all of a sudden I hear that he's not out there to protect me because this one part of me is something he's not cool with. And did you think that he was like looking down on you and judging you? Yeah, I felt incredibly betrayed. I just became so angry with God and angry with myself. It was everything that I always believed a lie now? It's not like who I knew him to be. So that was the God. Like, people are saying that 
you don't like these people, but you told me that you like everybody and that you accept everyone, but there's an exception for these certain group of people. What's wrong with that? When, when you see people part of the Christian right with signs that say God hates fags. I just think they're completely just disrespectful and they just don't have a heart, you know? Yeah. What it really does is just make you feel like a lesser person. I think that's their objective, you know? It, like, it just it makes you feel like all of a sudden you're not a part of the whole. And everyone wants to feel a part of something, you know? Mm -hmm. so I feel like I don't like certain things that go on in the world, but it's not the right way to go about it. So the period of time that you were homeless, mm -hmm. what, what did that do to your faith? I tried so hard not to think about God, but I, I would always hear these songs in my head, like the songs you learn when you're a kid and you're in church. I would always hear them. I tried to get away from it, but always, as I was running, it was always on my back. And in your future, what is it the relationship that you see yourself having with what you see as God, your God? What I really loved was just that, that energy, that really positive energy that I got from being in church and praying. Because like when you're praying, you realize that you're sending out a lot of positive energy. You're giving thanks, yeah. you're praising. And I miss that so much. And I was like, do I necessarily have to be in a church to get that? So I started realizing that like maybe I need to define what God meant to me. In hearing Nicole's story, I was left with a really big question. If parents aren't accepting and the church isn't accepting and social services are lacking, how does a young person grow? That period of time where you were couch shopping and where you were spending a lot of time on the streets and spending a lot of time at the pier, how has that as a It has given reality? me so much knowledge of how hard it is for people out there. Like it's made me aware of violence in the streets. It made it's made me aware of like a lot of kindness also, you know? Mm -hmm. It's shown me the reality that I have to know how to offend for myself. It just really, age, it's aged me a lot, you know? So you're a woman, you're a woman of color, and you're gay. When you look at your future, what do you see? And I know, I just, I, I've learned how to uh, feel empowered by all of that, because I feel like there's a lot of black kids out there, a lot of gay kids that I can identify with, and show that, like, it's okay, you know? And you don't have to hate yourself, you don't have to hide. Stay tuned for a look at next week's episode. Next week on my address, meet Leilani. Who am I? <laughs> she's seen the system and she's seen the street. Here is where I used to sleep. A night in my life would be to hit the back streets and make some money.